What the hell are you doing, dog? There ain't nothing there. What would you rather do? Work on this? Or do yard work? Let's go ahead and get back on this. Auto resto, take 35. Jeez. Hey folks, welcome back. Video number two on the XS11. Uh, didn't do any work on it yesterday because I was actually out doing yard work. We're still cleaning up stuff from the hurricane. You know, the big piles of uh, debris out by the road finally got picked up by their claw truck. So we're happy about that, but you know, it leaves a mess. So I had to go out there and rake and pick up the little crap and stuff. So we're still picking up some stuff and I got a little bit more to do still. So anyway, we got to get back on this because we've got to figure out a definitive diagnosis. The only way to do that, as I said in video number one, is to pull the head. Uh, we've also got other work to do here. I don't think I'm going to film any of this. We have a Virago. I got a Virago in here that kind of needs a going over. So uh, I don't know. That'll be a little later. The customer's not in any rush for it. Nor is this one, but you know, when I get into it this deep, I want to figure out where I'm going with it because I got to order parts. And uh, I know I certainly need uh, gaskets and uh, seals and all the other crap that goes along with it. But um, I, I need to get into it a little further. So that's, again, what we're going to do in this video. Let's go ahead and go through the procedure. We're going to pull the head and we're going to see hopefully definitively what's going on as re regards to the, uh, uh, to the issue with the oil in there. Right? More on that here in a bit. Yeah, service manual's a little weird. I don't know if they were smoking something back then when they wrote it. Some of these early manuals, the Japanese manuals, you'll notice are uh, translated poorly. Uh, the uh, translator, whoever wrote them, had a poor, uh, you know, poor ability to interpret grammar uh, as far as Imperial English, perhaps, and maybe even American English. But, uh, you know, I get the gist of it, and I've done a few of these on other inline fours, so... It says to, uh, I think I mentioned the other video, it says to actually take the tensioner out and then bar the motor over manual. I don't know why you'd ever do that. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the procedure mostly. We're going to pull the head cover off. The timing covers on the other side in which you crank the motor around with or on. And then uh, we'll get it over so we get the number one. We're going to set on top dead center number one, even though it really doesn't specify. Number one, intake valve opens and then closes. Then we'll look at the marks. We'll get it set. Then we'll pull it, the uh, tensioner out, and then we can start pulling the stuff for the cams and everything. So I'll get you set up in the stand, and we'll get that done. I'm not going to film absolutely every bit of it. Might do a little time lapsing here and there, but uh, then again, might skip around once something's done. So it all depends because, you know, we can't film everything. So it's not a tutorial, you know, it's not a how-to. I'm just showing you what I did and how I am doing it. Anybody want to take a guess how much that hospitalization that I had cost? I know it's digressing a little, but, uh, you know, I watch my insurance online, the Florida Blue, Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida, and I saw the bill that Sarasota Memorial Hospital submitted to them. Take a guess? About $66,000. Hmm. Now, you know how it works, of course. They don't actually get paid that. There's a, you know, a, I guess there's a contract amount. It's substantially less than that. The insurance shows it did pay it. I do have a certain amount out of pocket, which I expected. It's not unreasonable, so I do appreciate them uh, doing that, getting it paid quickly. At least it shows it's paid, so we'll have to watch that. But, you know, it is what it is. But I thought you might be interested in hearing that. Medical care is expensive. All right, so well, let's not put that that way, dummy. Yeah, so they're talking about this. I see what they mean now. They're talking about this. Here's your timing uh, marks, or I should say your time, not your mark, just your marks, but there are other things in here. Uh, this is um, a vacuum advance. You can see this runs up to one of the, um, one of the carb, something i don't know it runs up here but it's bolted actually through to the carb holders which by the way i've i've removed so this goes uh yeah goes up carburetor wise and uh yeah so that obviously is that we're going to leave all that alone but these are the flats that you want to turn this on you definitely don't want to try to put a hex in here some of them 
will have a bolt inside of a larger, looks like a nut, and uh, the service manual will have like warnings in there saying don't do it on the center, do it on the big outside. You can see you have an arrow on this one. I mentioned that on the VTX video. Some have arrows like this, some don't. It does indicate in the service manual, or state rather, that this motor turns clockwise when looking at this side as opposed to quote unquote other previous Yamaha models. So we have a nice arrow to make sure that we are doing it in the right direction. And uh, where the timing marks go to uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, here they are. <laughs> that would be it right here. Sorry, didn't see it. So we're going to rotate this around once we get to that point. Um, two top dead center on number one. Again, the intake valve opens and closes, and then we can line that up for uh, number one top dead center. All right. So that's what that looks like. All the bolts are out. Uh, it looks like there's two different lengths on these bolts, so you got to make sure you get them in the right place when you put them back. Some head covers have uh, three, sometimes even more different lengths. So uh, you don't want to put a short one in a place where there's supposed to be a longer one or vice versa, but the short one you could strip out the top of the threads or the longer one. Bottom it out, maybe crack something down below, so you don't want to do that either. So let's double, triple check. Everything's out. Yes, yes. So we'll just give her a little tappy tap tap with a small dead blue. That's interesting. It uses studs on the... Uh, on the cam caps instead of uh, like cap bolts. It's got studs and nuts. That's cool. Actually, I do like that better because on the ones with the cap bolts, when they, uh, when they naturally there's some pressure down on a cam because some of the one or more of the, of the uh, uh, valve springs is compressed when you're in a disassembly position like top dead center on number one or whatever the service manual says. And so if you have the cap bolts, you get them out so far and if you take them out too far, like all the way and then give the cam a little tap, it pushes up real quick and the cap bolts can go flying. Also the, uh, any of the alignment pins. That, <laughs> that's something I learned the hard way on doing my concourse. The um, valve clearance adjustment. Almost lost one of those pins down into the bad parts of the universe. You know what I'm saying? So now when I take these apart, I just loosen them up to the point where I still have enough thread engagement, especially on the cap bolts. Then I'll get the cam to release its energy as far as the springs go, then take the rest of them out. On this one, it's a little different uh, because uh, you have to disengage. The service manual says to take off both of, or all four of the, what do you call it? The sprocket bolts. Sprocket against the uh, cam. Uh, and I looked at a video online and gentlemen took out just the exhaust and that freed up way enough um, uh, you know, space or slack to take the uh, tensioner, the fixed tensioner out of here. And then, uh, you know, once he got this cam out, this one will come out. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to leave that one in, but just take the exhaust bolts out. Be really careful of that. You don't drop them in the motor, of course, because that's right there. So we'll stuff a little rag in there just to make sure. We'll take those out. We'll follow the service manual pretty much, um, like I said, by the book. But, you know, we can make slight modifications to that make number one sense and number two that uh, make it quicker, more efficient. All right, so we're going to watch the intake cam. 19 mil is what they say to use, a 19 mil flat. And, of course, we're going clockwise. We're going to bar the motor over. The intake on number one is just about to open. I think it may be just in that spot. Just closed, run the compression stroke for number one, and T. That looks right, usually on top dead center on each cylinder, they'll be pointed upwards and slightly in. And uh, you can see the pistonia is right there, so we're definitely on the right stroke. But you know what, I just thought of something, and I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. Um, I want to do a valve clearance check on this before I pull the cams in the head and I want to document it. I want to write it down uh, because uh, it's going to help me later on because if I know the clearance, let's say I don't do any valve work or anything. If I know the clearance, then if it's tight or loose, I know the general range at least of shims I need to order because I've measured the clearance before. I know what the clearance is, and even if I do a little valve work, even lapping or something, 
if it's let's say it's super tight then I look once I take it apart I look at the uh, shim number or measure it up if the shim number is obli obliterated and at least I can get an idea of what shim I need to put in that particular spot without measuring it first I got no idea so essentially what I have to do is I have to put it all back together measure it take it back apart and then take a look at the shim that's in there once all the work's done and then go okay we need to change shims now there is a way to change shims with a shim tool that they have apparently which pushes down on the shim uh, body the bo body of the shim you reach in there with a little pick tool and you pop the shim out with a magnet you know you get a magnet on it and I've done that on other Yamahas my old Seika 900 was the same way because it was a shim motor but um, in this one may not have to do it because if it's out on the bench we'll actually do a valve clearance a final valve clearance right out on the bench just rotate the uh, cams around and uh, put them in the right position for the intake and the exhaust and then uh, we can do it that way you know there's no reason why we have to um, you know not do that and get that set up on the bench and do a valve clearance check on the bench I've done that on other bikes like singles and stuff too which makes things so much easier you don't have to mess with it after that so yeah but if I do a valve clearance check now um, I'll at least have a reference that I think I can use in the future for um, at least, again, estimating what shims I'm going to need to get. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back, and I'll, I'll give you a, qu a really quick briefing on what I find. Our clearances are actually pretty good. Um, I built a little spreadsheet here, like I always do, and I document two sets of numbers, what it really is and what it feels like. And what I call the, what it feels like is what I adjust the values to based on feel. So, for example, if you go to number one, uh, the intake, the uh, values, by the way, are 6 to 8 thou on the intake and 8 to 10 on the exhaust imperial. So number one is 8 thou, but I put a note in here that the intake is loose. So if I adjust it, it's probably about 0085. So it's still, you know, close, but it's right on the border and so forth. You can figure that out. Uh, number three exhaust and number four intakes were spot on. So they are good, but the rest of them are slightly out, but certainly not that bad. Tensioners out. Uh, I forgot to mention before, you know, I, I'm really sorry I didn't do this till now. I did pull the coils, as you can see, just to get them out of the way. The service manual doesn't say you have to. I just got them out. They're real easy, and I took the horny out, too, just to get it out of the way. You know, it's easier to work without shit dangling in front of you. Uh, I want to caution you, whenever you open up top end of a motor on a bike like this, just make sure there's nothing loose above it like uh, these kind of things if that's uh, one of those that kind of clips on or if it's got a little one of those uh, you know springy types around a hose or something get rid of those because you can't see everything and if you bump against it you may not see it comes off the hose and falls down the cam chain tunnel or something so it's just uh, something that I do is to make sure that everything loose uh, is not loose you know or anything that can fall in there can't do it I, I also labeled this side for one and four so I remember and uh, you know took a picture of the wires although the colors line up anyway but you know I, I just try to stay organized when it comes to that speaking of organization um, I bag stuff up and I take it apart this one doesn't need to be labeled because I kind of know what that's a tensioner but uh, anything else I label as well and when you put um, when you take things out, like the, I took this oil line off, um, you can put these little ear plugs in, uh, the holes, to make sure that not, no dirt or nothing goes in there. These work really well for that. Just a couple things. So now we're going to get the sprocket off, and um, then we'll uh, start disassembling the rest of it. Okay, the exhaust cam is out. Uh, the service manual is kind of right. I said it was wrong before about the order of operations. I'll explain that here in a second regarding the tensioner. There's some tiny pins that are uh, pressed into that center cap as alignment pins. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the gear aligning to the camshaft because the marks are actually on the camshaft on the back side here for timing marks. So that line up with marks on the caps. So uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So I'll explain what I mean by uh, the service manual here in a second. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the intake cam out. All right, the cams are out no issues got a safety wire on the chain okay so you know these service manuals as i said sometimes they are a little bit lacking in detail or explanation but you kind of kind of have to use a little common sense now it says top dead center as i said before it doesn't say which top dead center turns out when you have it on number one top dead center one and four will line up with that um, 
timing mark because one and four are companion. But as far as top dead center goes for number one, when you have it on number one, you can only get at one of the bolt on the cams, uh, the, the sprockets rather, and you need to get at both of them. Now they don't say this, but obviously they need you to rotate the motor around at that point and get the second one out, which you can't do when there's tension on the chain because it'll pop the thing off and the tensioner will really torque up the chain with the sprocket hanging off the side of the, of the cam, that lobe that it rides on, okay, the center part. So it is correct, you're gonna to have to bar it over 180 degrees to go from top dead center uh, number one to basically top dead center on number four, then you can get at the second one and then you can um, do it that way. I think it's 180 I turned it, yeah. So that would make sense. So yeah, that's what you got to do. So right now she's sitting on um, uh, top dead center for number four. We'll just keep that in mind and reverse the process when we go to put them back on. So it's no big deal. Uh, like I said, nothing got stressed. Now the other thing I'll mention on a motor like this is you have these studs with the nuts and there's little thin washers that go underneath each one of these nuts. So you got to account for all of those. You take them off very carefully and make sure you've got the equal number of washers to the equal number of nuts. They're very thin and with this oil they can stick to your hands. So if you don't see one sticking to your hands and you reach back in here, the next thing you know it's down inside the motor. So you got to be very careful when you take those out and make sure you account for them. And uh, that's about it. So this doesn't have any cam bearings. It's a typical one where it rides inside the actual bores uh, that were machined um, in for the cams, which if you're not already aware of this, the reason why you have cam caps like this on one or both sides is so for the machining process. So they can get in here with a tool and bore these out. There isn't any on that side. Kawasaki is using them on both, but this one apparently they get it on one side with their tool, which oh, how they do that, that's a hell of a lot of stick out to run in there with a boring tool, but they may have a way to support the end or something. I don't know, on a center, like a narrow center or something. Who knows, but uh, that's, that's why they do that. So, All right, so uh, the cams are out. Like I said, right now it's on 4 TDC. That's fine, um, and uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Timing these things up afterwards is not really a big deal. I mean, you just get it on. If you know where the crank is, and then you know where the cams are by the marks, all you got to do is get the chain to fall into the sprockets right, and then it's there. So right now we're going to pull the, um, what do you call them? <laughs> the uh, shims and the buckets out. But each one of these has to go into an individual bag. Um, so I mark them for what cylinder they come out of. So in this case, it would be four exhaust. I'm sorry, four intake, four exhaust, and so forth, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. You just pull them out with a magnet. Okay, so exhaust number four. Hey, it's an eight-valve motor. You need 16 bags for the 16 valves, so consider ourselves lucky. Just use a magnet, go right on top of the shim, uh, come on out, and then you just get it and pop her in. Now they're all in where I know which ones they came out of, so that's why I do this, because they got to go back in the same spot, so yeah. Anyway, um, now we'll continue on. And removing the cylinder head on this bike is typical with pretty much every one I've ever worked on. Even if it's not specifically stated in the service manual, which they do, you reverse the tightening sequence. So I made a little drawing out of the service manual so it doesn't get all dirty over here. And this would be the torque sequence. So one, two, uh, where is it, three, four, and so on. So when we remove it, and it says to remove all the bolts a half a turn at a time, which we'll do, uh, we simply start at thir uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and so forth, and go through here. I won't bore you with that. Maybe do a quick time lapse, and we will uh, get all the fasteners out of the head and bagged up. Okie doke, all the fasteners are out, and these uh, steel washers are the biggest pain in the ass on these. Just about every bike has them. 
The Kawasaki's have a sealing washer on the outside ones, which are made out of copper because of the fact that it's an oil passage. But they're like this on this bike, and they always stick to the head, uh, especially in the inside one. So you want to get these out because what will end up happening is you try to slide up the stud. They'll cock a little bit, and they'll grab, and then it's a real pain in the ass. So get them out. And now the uh, service manual shows that you just start tapping it. Um, you know, and you know, you can use these studs right here because they do extend down from the head down through the cylinder block, but it also shows three reinforced points that you can use as a pry point on the front, which we may or may not do. But you know, I always go off of the adage of fire service, try before you pry. So see, this is moving already. So this is why we don't pry right off the bat. Try before you pry. Now to get it clear of the cam chain, this is what I do. I already have a safety wire down through it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this safety wire and just tie it back together, you know, just like this. I'm going to let it drop all the way down, just like that. So the chain is essentially resting down inside the crankcase now and it's not going to go anywhere. I got a place to grab it. I have this right in there. So then I can lift it up and just kind of pull it off the safety wire and then not a problem. Otherwise, you got to have three hands. So yeah, try before you pry. There we go. One side. Okay, so this one's loose. Come on, baby. What are you hanging up on? Ah, the gasket's hanging up there. Hang on. There we go. Do not scrape the seating surface of the head on the studs, which I did not. As far as you know, yeah, sometimes the head gasket sticks with it. Here's your tensioner arm. Put that back down for now. All right. Uh, let's, um, what are we going to look at first? Since we're right here, I guess we'll, yeah, you know what, let's pull that off. We'll just go ahead and get the gasket right out of the way. There's no pieces are going to fall down into anything. There he goes, and I can still get my chain, see? I'm, I can still yank my chain. There's a rubber, sort of rubber, thing. It's kind of like the KZs have that seals off the cam chain tunnel, the center. It's uh, rubber and metal. Uh, I was looking at the kit that I'm looking to get for it. I think that might be part of the whole head gasket on the kit like if you put a copper head gasket in uh, what you have to do is you, uh, the copper head gasket seals it off and you just use like um, uh, you know permatex or three bond or something around that but we're not doing that we're going back OEM so all right um, let me reposition you and uh, we'll take a look at two and three bores because we are number one and I'm sorry yeah two and three because we're number one and four top dead center there's three. There is some, come on, I hate this dangly thing. There is some um, stuff on, not stuff, but some marks on the wall, but it's, you know, he said this bike was sitting for quite some time. It's probably where the piston sat for a while, but I don't feel anything on the cylinder wall. It's more like a stain. I do not feel any scoring, anything like that. I can't detect that at all in the surface. So I would say it's more like a stain on the, uh, on the, you know, on the surface of the bores. Sometimes that does happen. Let's go over number two. Now we can bar this over. We just have to be mindful of the cam chain not to get it, um, you know, jammed up in there. There's number two. There's some carbon pieces that kind of came off. See, this is all carbony around this lip here. There's, I don't think that there is a, uh, you know, a, a step like from where. This is all carbon up here because back here it's not there. So, yeah, this one don't look bad either. Get those out of there, little pieces that are down in there before we move it. So you can see kind of a little bit. But you can see the swirl marks also, the, the cross hatching. So 
Now a viewer, a viewer commented on the video and said something that could be the case, which I hope it's not, but he said uh, it's, it seems like either the cam, uh, the uh, valve stem seals are bad or, or the oil control rings have basically lost their uh, springiness or expansion ability. Of course, trying to get into trouble. Mm-hmm. That dog hates golf carts or anything that moves slow up the road. He just hates it. I don't know why. Maybe I need to buy a golf cart so I can train him to ride and he won't freaking bark at him anymore. All right, let me clean this out a little bit. Uh, make sure the bores, you know, are clean so I can bar it over. We'll check one and four. All righty, number four. Whoops, where are you? This is the one that had all the oil in it. I mean, there's just a ton of oil in this. It's possible. It's possible. But remember, it was sitting for a while. The only thing I did was crank it around at uh, basic, uh, you know, cranking RPM. Was that about 400 RPM or so? I mean, it would pump oil with that, but gee whiz, I don't know if it would pump that much. I mean, there's a ton of oil in here. Just real, real oily. But the board don't look bad. Like I said, there's no scoring or anything. There is just a crap load of oil in here. Well, the only way you know for sure is to just set this aside, you know, cover up the open parts, which I already did in the center, of course, and then I'm going to get over on the head. But that's going to be another video because this one's already pretty much at the length that I want it to. So that's basically taking it apart. Basically taking it apart, though. I mean, it's not much different than any other across the frame for not too hard and uh yeah so oh, by the way when you <laughs> when you pop these uh oh yeah here you got these pins over the alignment pins there's one still in the head apparently and there's one there so yeah just keep in mind they're not going to go anywhere pretty much because of the of the stud but you know got to keep in mind of those that's how it lines up so yeah you just got to keep in mind when you first crack these things because they're long studs they're going to scream they're going to scream big time so what do you think? Do you think the job is good? Do you think I did a good job? Hmm? Guess not. All right, folks. Regardless of what he thinks, I think it was okay. Um, this is not how to do it. It's how I did it. Following the service data as closely as I could. Sort of wrong on saying that they're on drugs when they put that, uh, you know, cam chain tension removal out of what I thought was sequenced, but apparently it's not because you still are on the tension side of the chain. You can move the motor over to the next top dead center for number four in that case, and then you can get the second bolt out that's on the uh, sprocket. Service manual says take all four sprockets bolts off, so the both on two on the exhaust and two on the intake. But like the guy did on the YouTube channel that I watched last night, you don't really need to. You pull that chain to the side on the ex on the intake side. And uh, then you can get the exhaust one out, one, uh, the exhaust cam out. Once the cam's out, plenty of slack to get the intake one out, which is how I'm going to do it on the way, you know, putting it back together. I'll just reverse the process. But like I said, this is how I'm doing it, not necessarily how to do it. It's not a step-by-step -step tutorial, just kind of highlights. And uh, I was mentioning before about a viewer that said uh, maybe the oil control rings are, have lost their tension. That's possible. I'm not ruling out having to pull the cylinder block at this point. But in the next video, I think we're going to find out 100%. We're going to set up and start shooting some footage on disassembling the head. We'll start with number four exhaust valve, and we'll see exactly what's going on in there. I'll show you one at the end of this video where a stem seal was actually tore or torn, and it was actually on, I think, number three or number four exhaust on that bike. It was a KZ-1000 get you an idea what I'm talking about. So if you like what you saw, subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, share the whole bit, ring, you know. So if you like what you saw, subscribe, ring the bell, share, you know, subscribe. So if you like what you saw, don't hesitate to subscribe, ring the bell, share the video, like the video, you know what to do. And then you get notified when I put more junk like this up. So until the next video comes out, don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.